For those who aren't familiar, tell me a little about yourself, your name, um, what do you do, um, and why you're so passionate about um, running for, for this position. Yeah, um, so my name is Robert Emmons Jr. Uh, in terms of where I grew up, uh, I really had to dive into uh, who I was um, to, to fully understand uh, where, I, where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, so what I've aligned myself with is that I'm from two different places. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, in the first half of my life, um, which was extremely formative, um, I lived in Maysland in New Jersey, mm -hmm. which is about 15 minutes away from Atlantic City, okay. uh, to a father who's a pastry chef and a, a mother who is a bus aide. Um, grew up poor, um, and with that came um, tons of struggle. Uh, but what we lacked in, in money, my parents made up for in the basic understanding that we're placed here on this earth to serve and to be of service to one another. Mm -hmm. uh, so throughout my entire life, my, my dad and my mother, they dedicated their lives uh, towards service um, and they didn't have any money. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that was extremely formative in, in my life um, growing up and, and learning how to be a leader um, from the orientation of, of being a, a servant first. Mm -hmm. um, things got really tough while we were in New Jersey uh, and all throughout zero to 12, there were times where our electricity was off or gas or water, uh, but we were never about to be evicted. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I was 12 years old, we were um, in, the, in the process of being evicted. So my grandparents uh, gave my parents a call and they were like, it's, it's time for uh, Robert and my sister Christine uh, to move to Chicago mm -hmm. to live with them. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that. So we moved to Chicago when I was uh, 12 years old. Uh, this is also around the time in which Barack Obama was rising. We'll get to that a little <laughs> later. Uh, and I moved to Chicago, and for the first time in my life, I saw my struggles amplified mm -hmm. um, because I was one of the only people in my community mm -hmm. in New Jersey struggling with, with the issues we were, we were facing. Mm -hmm. However, when I moved to Chicago, that's when everybody in my, in my, well, most people in my high school were, were, were dealing with those same things. Mm -hmm. So I, I got a broader understanding of, of some of the issues that the country was facing, right, right, um, like right. gun violence and, uh, and over-incarceration, militarization of our communities and our schools looking like prisons. Uh, I, I saw that firsthand for the first time when I moved to Chicago um, and I dedicated my life from that moment towards changing it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, against all odds, um, due to my community and my, my grandmother who poured so much into me and prayed, uh, prayed for us to make sure that we can make it out of that situation. Made it uh, to the University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign, uh, graduated in 2017. Mm -hmm. And since then, uh, I've been working in my community through civic engagement and innovation. Uh, so I worked for a nonprofit uh, as the manager of program innovation. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I also became a consultant with a few other uh, national nonprofits um, around the country. So your grandmother played a huge role um, I imagine in, in your in your life. What is her kind of thoughts of you right yeah. now? What? Man, you really are trying to make me cry. <laughs> uh, it's it's interesting. The, the process of becoming a politician, mm -hmm. elected official, uh, you have to be extremely uh, introspective mm -hmm. uh, about who you are and how you got your start. Mm -hmm. uh, so today on my bus ride over. Um, I actually turned on Sunday Candy uh, by Chance the Rapper. Love that song. Uh, and it's like one of the few like grandma songs and it just happens to be a uh, Chicago grandma story. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandmother, when she retired from 30 years of being an educator, uh, she didn't move to Florida, go on vacation. Mm -hmm. uh, she opened up a local food bank mm -hmm. in Inglewood. Um, she started a block club on, Se on Saturday Night Street. Mm -hmm. So when you ask me how she played a role in my life, she was the very first organizer I've, I've ever been around. Mm. And she did so without the cameras or the, uh, the bullhorns or the, the media attention. She did it because she saw a problem in her community. She addressed it and began to fix it. Mm -hmm. And she brought together a coalition of people also passionate to change their community from the ground up. Uh, and then she, I'm still benefiting from, from her prayers mm -hmm. uh, and the and the values that she's instilled in, in me, um, and then also the values that she instilled in my mother and my father, and how they played a, a major role in my life. Um, my grandma means everything to me, uh, and it's, it's just incredible for me to be where I am uh, compared to where I was. Yeah. Um, and I, I, give, I give tons of credit uh, to her. Where was the first place that you 
um, learn the power of, of your voice um, and leadership. Yeah, so it was a, I would say voice and just my, the power of my actions. Mm -hmm. um, when I was five years old, I grew up in the church. Um, when I was five years old, uh, you know, in, like, in the black church, is the pastor at the very end mm -hmm. of the service uh, says, if, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come to the front. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was five, I made that conscious decision to, to go up in the front of the church mm -hmm. uh, and accept uh, Jesus as my uh, personal Savior, uh, which I, in that moment, I, I knew what I was doing mm -hmm. and the ramifications of it. Uh, but it was what happened afterwards. So a lot of the youth in my, my church began to take that step mm -hmm. and, and go up to the altar when, when they call after um, I first did that, uh, did it that one Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, so that was the first time that I, I fully understood uh, the power um, of influence mm -hmm. uh, and the power by leading uh, by example and not just being about talk, but right. also doing the thing uh, to help inspire um, the people that you surround yourself with. Yeah, awesome. So um, we went to um, University of Illinois in, in Urbana-Champaign, um, and a lot of people go to college, they get their degree, um, and oftentimes they leave home, right? They go off and kind of launch off somewhere else. Um, what kept you connected to like Chicago? Why did you decide to come back um, as opposed to go off like somewhere else? Yeah, I actually lost connection mm -hmm. with Chicago at, at one point uh, in my life. Mm -hmm. So I got into the University of Illinois. Uh, one of the, the people that I got into the University of Illinois for, uh, with is my best friend, uh, Devante. Um, again, against all odds, uh, against all stats, we, we made it to the University of Illinois, we became roommates. Uh, and then we began to see the systemic barriers that prevent uh, many of young people that look just like us mm -hmm. from actually persisting and graduating from college. So things got um, really bad for Devante. And the university sent him a letter, an academic probation letter, mm. uh, stating that he would no longer, uh, if he didn't get his act together, he'd no longer be able to continue at the university. Mm. So instead of the university saying, like, we need to get better at right. serving you, right, right, they told right. him that he wasn't a good fit mm -hmm. uh, for the university. And, and, by, and they associated his lack of academic performance uh, with him not trying his absolute hardest right. to perform well. Um, long story short, uh, Devante got us into some trouble uh, and eventually uh, was shot and killed on the south side of Chicago a few, a few years later. Uh, I felt extremely guilty uh, about him being shot and killed uh, because I believed at that time that I had the capacity um, and the influence to, to help him. Mm -hmm. However, I did not. Mm -hmm. um, for, for reasons we won't get into mm -hmm. right now, um, but I did not. So I felt like a phony, um, and this is around the time in which I was in D.C. in Springfield mm -hmm. um, advocating for gun violence prevention, but at the same time, uh, the best friend was shot and killed. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually withdrew from the University of Illinois mm -hmm. um, because of that, that, that feeling of feeling like uh, an imposter, a phony. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't believe in myself any longer. I didn't believe in and and what that mindset I currently have is that like I can really change anything. Mm -hmm. um, so withdrew, moved to Milwaukee. Um, and from there I moved to Columbia, South Carolina in 2016. Mm -hmm. um, and in Columbia 20, 2016, you can imagine what the political discourse looked like mm -hmm. in Columbia, South Carolina and the rise of our current president. Right. Um, with, with that, um, I quickly learned that I, I wasn't a phony, I wasn't an imposter. I needed to learn a lesson, um, a lesson about not giving up on my community, mm -hmm. uh, a lesson about making sure that everyone has the second chances that I, that I was given mm -hmm. uh, in my life. And went back to the University of Illinois, graduated from the University of Illinois, and then from there um, decided I needed, to move back, I needed to move back to Chicago uh, to make sure that uh, I never let the Devontes of the world down mm -hmm. again. Um, mm -hmm. So that's been my commitment, and that's why I uh, have no plans on ever moving from Chicago, and specifically the South Side. Yeah, I think it's interesting, um, and, and as I've talked to many leaders and, and individuals um, that have encountered unfortunate situations, specifically with people that are close to them, yeah. um, it takes a level of... Um, um, crap, I can't think of the word. 
but it takes something to be able to turn that like negative situation into the driving force of like why they push forward to continue to like do what they do, right? Whether um, it's you know a, a friend who got shot, or whether um, as I spoke with someone else being evicted or um, dropping out of college, like allowing these things to like push them forward um, in their career. So I mean that, that that's amazing um, that you were able to to learn that lesson and to to be able to ensure that that doesn't happen um, to any anyone else. So. Yeah, I mean I I, I learned it in a really unfortunate yeah. Um, yeah. manner. So though I'm thankful for that that lesson, um, it shouldn't have had to come in, in, in that way. Yeah. And that's a that's an issue that we have to, to come to uh, terms with in this country. Mm -hmm. that too many of our young people are being brutally murdered mm -hmm. um, in urban environments around our country. We have to address that mm -hmm. um, head on. Uh, and, that, and that's what's been my purpose um, and, and the driving force is the yes, what happened to me personally, mm -hmm. um, but also the yes, what's happening to, to millions of families around the country. Right. A lot of people start their political careers uh, locally. Um, why Congress? Like why um, that dream? Yeah, um, for a few different reasons, mm -hmm. um, but I'll, I'll settle on one for right now. Mm -hmm. uh, gun violence mm -hmm. in our country. Uh, I. I I firmly believe, and research points to it, uh, it's a national issue. Yeah. Um, Chicago is, is constantly stated as having some of the most strict gun laws in the country. Um, however, we have some of the highest gun violence deaths per capita right. um, than any other place in the country. Uh, so it's a federal issue, and it needs to be addressed um, from the root causes to ensure that we not only reduce the number of gun, viol uh, gun violence episodes within our community, but we move to a point in which within our lifetime, we completely eliminate gun violence. Uh, and that's one of my personal goals. Um, and that's, one, that's a goal that I think we need leaders actually committing themselves to. Mm -hmm. And saying bold things, uh, not because it's politically um, expedient, mm -hmm. but because it's the right thing to do and it's the right thing to work for. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have to be bold. And we have to say the thing and mean the thing and be intentional about the entire process mm -hmm. and realize that it's not within our own merit that's going to accomplish that goal. But once we build true coalitions mm -hmm. all dedicated to, towards eliminating gun violence, can you imagine the things we can do when we put that, all of our minds to that? So that's the goal. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why I've, just, I've landed on, on running for, uh, for Congress mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, to running locally. However, I plan on fully um, committed myself towards working and building coalitions with local elected officials mm -hmm. um, and statewide elected officials and community leaders and activists and organizers mm -hmm. um, and ordinary people mm -hmm. to accomplish those goals. I believe um, I'm the right person um, and we're the right, uh, this is the right moment um, for something like that to come to our country. Um, when you think about gun violence in, in our country, uh, I feel like it's it's one of those things that we all know what's happening, right? It's on the news every single day. Um, unfortunate situations are taking place. Um, one recently um, here in, in the state of Illinois earlier this week or late last week um, in schools and churches, I mean, everywhere. Um, but nothing is happening, you know? It's always thoughts and prayers, right? When, when someone is up kind of like bringing this issue um, up for some real change to happen. For whatever reason, nothing happens. Um, why, like, why is this such a taboo issue for for our um, for Congress to to rally around and to make changes for? Um, and how do you think that that you will be able to possibly change that? Yeah. So I I, I want to root us back into like the human aspect mm -hmm. of, of gun violence, because uh, I think sometimes it's easy to get caught up in the numbers yeah. um, to the point where we don't look at those numbers as actual lives right. um, that are being lost, nor do we look at the ripple effects of, of that loss that impacts their brothers and sisters, that impacts their, their, their mothers and fathers, um, and it also has uh, a more long-term um, effect on generations uh, to come. So I, th I think rooting ourselves in the fact that we are losing lives, uh, and like real lives, mm -hmm. futures, dreams, hopes, uh, I think that's the first step. And then from there, I think we need to, to commit ourselves towards doing true research to figure out um, all of the root causes mm -hmm. that are leading to 
um, that being our current reality. Um, I don't think that that's something that we are doing correctly as a country, is rooting ourselves in the human story uh, of gun violence and then committing ourselves towards research to make sure that we're making data-informed decisions uh, to, to change our country. And I say it all the time, I'm not anti-guns. Mm -hmm. uh, and when I, when I fight, I, I fight for gun violence prevention. Right. Um, no matter which side of the aisle you sit on, you should be, gun, you should be an advocate of gun violence pre prevention. Right, right, um, right, you know, right. Whether you have a gun or not, you don't ever want to use that gun on another person. Mm -hmm. Or you shouldn't want to ever use that gun on, the, right, on another right. person. So I, th I think we, we as a country need to move towards truly understanding the problem. Uh, and again, all dedicating ourselves towards making sure that no more lives are lost um, in, in no community, whether that be Parkland, Florida, or Chicago, or Detroit, or St. Louis, or Baltimore, or Los Angeles. No one should, should be afraid uh, to go to school. No one should be afraid to go to, to, go to church. Mm -hmm. um, no one should be afraid to sleep in their front room um, at, at a fear that a bullet's gonna, gonna strike them while, uh, while, while they lay, lay a rest. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big problem, but right. we, can, we can solve it. Mm -hmm. We can solve it, and again, we just have to do it together. Um, there are community-based organizations in Chicago, mm -hmm. um, in New Lenox, in Tinley Park, working to interrupt violence uh, from, from the ground up. Mm -hmm. uh, we, as elected officials, need to make sure that we're providing adequate resources so that they can scale their projects mm -hmm. uh, to, to save more lives. What were some of the things that you heard as you were going out, talking to people, really trying to figure out if you should run or not? What were some things that like really stood out um, to you? Yeah. Well, first of all, in November, I, qu I quit my job mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to fully commit myself towards the exploration process mm -hmm. itself. I wanted to be uh, intentional, and I also wanted to be authentic. Um, and I wanted to have a moment to truly interrogate who I was as a person to make sure that this was not at all a vanity project mm -hmm. or an exercise in my ego. Right. Um, so I, that's why I quit my job and fully dedicated my, that, my, my, my time on that exploration process. And what came out of that? exploration process is something that I had in my gut already uh, already know and that's our people uh, aren't cynics mm -hmm. um, as some may think we are um, our people are hopeful for a, a better future um, and most of our people are even more than hopeful they're actually working um, to create that better future um, so throughout the exploration uh, we've engaged um, digitally mm -hmm. with thousands of people around um, the state of Illinois and then uh, hundreds of people directly in the first district. Mm -hmm. um, and then beyond digital, me and my team, we also got onto the ground. Uh, so we've actually interviewed mm -hmm. um, over 100 individuals and asked them a series of questions about their government, some of their ideas to make the country better, some of their concerns uh, to what they, what they think we can do better as a country. Um, and overwhelmingly, um, young, old, black, white, doesn't matter your gender orientation, everyone's saying the same thing, is we have to address the gun violence mm -hmm. um, epidemic in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, that was what was in my gut before I, I started the expiration, um, but was reaffirmed uh, throughout the expiration itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and then just what, what blew me away, um, and what I'm so thankful for, beyond the, the canvassing and um, and building up name recognition uh, and diving into the community um, is the donors. Mm -hmm. um, so throughout the expiration, we uh, operated a pledge campaign um, in which we asked uh, individuals um, around the country and, and more in Illinois uh, to commit their dollars mm -hmm. uh, to a potential campaign. And within the first month and a half, um, raised funds from over 120 um, individual small dollar donations and I tell you that was just so powerful mm -hmm. uh, people that, have, that never donated to a, a political campaign never thought they'd be engaging um, in, a, in a political movement right. they were doing that and they, they were going beyond um, what they what they had to do and, and doing something and it, it wasn't and I knew it wasn't because of just me mm -hmm. um, I knew they they were doing it for themselves and for what they knew we can become when we as a people are operating at our absolute best. Right. Um, so that was, that was just 
mind blowing that people would give me, give this campaign um, their precious treasures. Um, one individual, she actually texted me one morning after donating $10 to the campaign and she felt so bad about only being able to donate $10. And I had to explain to her um, like the theory of relativity mm -hmm. and as it pertains to, uh, to money. And I was like, your $10, when you have $30 in your account, means the absolute world right. to me. Right. And that, that touched my heart. I mean, no, I'll, I'll take your $1,000 there if <laughs> you have it. But then, and then in that moment, that, that meant more to me than even like a, a, a $1,000 right. um, right. gift because I knew that that was, that was some of her blast. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she gave it because of what she believed that if someone comes in our community and says that we, we the people, are going to change this community, uh, what we can do as, as a people is, is beyond what we can even fathom in this, in this current moment. Yeah. So yeah, she didn't, she didn't eat, eat from the soul shack the, the <laughs> meal that day uh, because she dedicated that money to, yeah. towards this movement. Yeah, no, I can imagine how inspiring that is to, to be out. Um, and, and even when you are very, um, when you're stepping out, yeah. You're going out there, listening, trying to figure it out. And, and for people, early support and early donations, I can imagine, um, mean the world. Yeah. Like, it's like, wow, you guys really believe in what we can do. Um, so I, I can imagine how, how powerful that was. But what was that thing that was like, you know what? I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to do it. Um, what was that like? that moment of you finally making that decision. You had all of us on social media, I mean, following and waiting for what this decision was going to be. Um, and I remember I was at work and I saw the video and I was like, <laughs> I was super excited. Um, but what was that moment like um, for you to finally put that out there? Um, two things um, that are kind of contradictory mm -hmm. towards one another mm -hmm. and it created some type of like dissonance, mm -hmm. but however, I'm, I'm glad uh, for for that experience, um, on one end, there was this extreme level of peace mm -hmm. um, to let the community know what was going on in, in my brain mm -hmm. uh, and, and what I had envisioned um, for the trajectory of, of the first district. Mm -hmm. So it was like that, that sense of peace. Um, and then I, I felt that we, as a people, and, and specifically me and my team, uh, what we committed ourselves to, and, in reference to the expiration, uh, prepared us um, to be able to, to launch a really successful campaign. Right. Um, so that, that piece too was like, we've, we've done all we can do to, to, to get us to this point. Mm -hmm. um, and it was an extremely thoughtful decision. Um, and some people thought that we had already made our decision the moment I announced my expiration. I was like, no, mm -hmm. absolutely not. I'm 50-50, I'll let, I'll, let, I'll, I'll let the times and the people help me make that ultimate decision. Mm -hmm. And then on the other end, um, there was this, this, this feeling of like, not nervousness, not being afraid, um, but anxious. Um, because of the current political discourse, um, you do think about what this means for, for your family. Um, and there's no turning back yeah. once, you, once you announce that you're, you're running for public office. Um, so that, that, that occurs to you. And, and those, those, those moments do play in your head. Like, what am, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. uh, what, am I, what, do I, what am I sacrificing? Uh, to fully commit uh, towards again reaching reaching that uh, that realization of what we can be when we're operating at our absolute best. Right. Uh, but we we did the hard work, uh, had the conversations with my family, and made sure we were all on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are my first supporters. Uh, they supported me when I was a a five-year-old bad kid that thought I was going to play NBA, even though I was like <laughs> five one. Uh, <laughs> And they saw they saw this coming um, mm -hmm. before I saw it coming. Mm -hmm. um, so again, it's, it's that it's that piece of knowing that we we did the work um, and knowing that we're we're not alone. Mm -hmm. And I don't need to. It's not it's not my faith in myself mm -hmm. um, that's that's giving me giving me peace. It's mm -hmm. it's my faith in God. Yeah. Um, and I, and, I, and my faith in community. Mm -hmm. um, so God being. I know he goes before me mm -hmm. um, in, in every single thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um, and I know he prepares uh, my route the way, the way he ordained it to. Yeah. And in my community, uh, I, I know they got my back. And I also know our communities aren't starting off on a blank slate yeah. like some elected officials uh, insinuate. Mm -hmm. Our communities are thriving. Our people are resilient. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not starting from scratch. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm starting 
rooted right in that mid, right in that middle, mm -hmm. uh, to make sure uh, that that we achieve the goals that we set out to achieve. Awesome. Yeah, and I think a thread out here is just this the, the power of people, yeah. right? Um, and understanding um, that you have to build those coalitions of people. Um, and understanding that essentially they are the, the where you receive your quote unquote power yeah. um, as a politician. Um, so I'm I mean like I told you I'm I'm super proud of you and inspired by this campaign and want to assist in any way that I can. Yeah. How can people learn more? Um, how can they sign up? How can they donate? Um, where should they go? Yeah, so donation is huge. Um, but beyond that, how do you sign up? Mm -hmm. You can go to robertemmons.org. And you can also follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. uh, my Twitter handle is rmmons2020. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, my Facebook uh, profile is just, if you type in Robert Emmons Jr., uh, my public page will, will pop up. I may not add you on my personal account. That's <laughs> what me and Brittany show beach pictures and stuff like that. But uh, on the public page, you'll, you'll get the, you, you know, get more insight into to, to, to how I think about politics and cool. what we plan on doing for the country. Cool. Last thing, because... Um, this is a question that I think uh, the purpose of what we the people kind of started. What advice do you have for for other millennials who are kind of wanting to bring about change in their communities, um, whether it's through um, a political office, um, whether it's through starting a nonprofit, whether it's leading a movement? What advice do you do you have for them now? Um, that that is the advice I would give mm -hmm. um, anyone who wants to do anything mm -hmm. um, in their life is is now. Yeah. Um, like I said earlier in uh, today's show, is tomorrow is never promised. Yeah. Uh, it's important to commit yourself towards fixing your community, living into your dreams exactly where you stand. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the perfect moment. There will not be a perfect moment. Yeah. Don't wait for the perfect time. Don't wait for permission from anybody uh, to give you access to a space. You have to take it. Yeah. You have to take what you want, and you have to do it again now. Awesome. Thank you so much, dude. I, I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, like I said, I'm wishing you well. Thank you. And um, yeah. Thank you.